Sandpaper is a pretty basic and crucial tool, right? But sandpaper wasn't invented until the 11th century. So I've always wondered what craftsmen used before it was invented. The answer is a surprisingly wide range of minerals, plants, and even a shark. Let's recreate some and put them to the test. Well, things are wrapping up with rebuilding the workshop since the fire and moving in. Still not quite able to really do some good uh, larger projects, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to explore something I've been kind of curious about. Something we often overlook is the final polishing and refining step of a lot of woodworking and metalworking. And what exactly did they used to use historically? So let's explore a few of these historical tools and methods. First up, it's worth noting that with using more historical hand tools, sanding is often not as crucial. Shaping your work with draw knives and finishing with hand planes, you can get an incredibly smooth finish that doesn't even need to be sanded. But still, the need sometimes arises, especially with extra refined sanding, so let's explore some options. For areas a hand plane doesn't work, a simple tool called a card scraper can be used. Made from a flat piece of steel, once squared off, a harder piece of steel called a burnisher is used to make a burr on the edge. It can then be used to smooth out any rough areas on your wood. So I have the scraper that I forged and put a little bit of an edge on. Got the burr. Let's try it out. Rough piece of wood, a little bit difficult to plane this because it's kind of a curved section right here. We have some just professionally made ones which are basically look exactly the same but it might have a little bit more of a burr, so you can see how that compares. I've got a pretty rough edge here, a lot of tool marks. Let's see how well this does. Seems to work pretty good, actually. Took a bit of work. These are some pretty deep gouges and everything, but I'll show the professional one. It's a lot crisper of a cut. It almost feels like a miniature plane. So it's definitely a bit sharper, I think it's a bit harder steel than what I used for mine. Oh yeah, that works really nice. I don't have a curved one here. All right, I think that turned out pretty good. Definitely not perfectly smooth, got a lot of scratch marks. So let's move on to a little bit finer abrasive then. In contrast to a sharp cutting edge, abrasives work by rubbing and friction. The most basic option is just a rock, like sandstone or pumice, which have been used as early as ancient Egyptian times. Piece of metal here, it's all rusty. We can test how well these rocks will work to polish it. Not a fine polish, but uh, definitely pretty aggressive and got metal exposed. Try it on wood. Got some rough patch of wood right here. Let's try some stone polishing and see how well they'll sand it off. First with some sandstone. Sandstone definitely works pretty good. Give it a nice, relatively smooth. Gotta be careful. So get rough edges of any kind of extra grain from this. And especially the pumice stone actually, the car of grooves into it actually kind of set it back a little bit. So just a sandstone by itself actually did a pretty good job. Yeah, fairly smooth. I wouldn't say it's uh, finished smooth. So let's look at it even finer stuff now. So probably one of the more interesting materials I've found in researching that supposedly were used for sanding projects is shark skin. So I bought a shark. Mmm, shark. <laughs> yep, baby shark. Boop doo. Hello. Even with gloves. Wow, that is. It's ripped, it's literally ripped the gloves off. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is definitely like sandpaper. Basically, you're gonna skin him, get a section of it, dry it out, and we can start sanding. Ew, it's gooing. I think that'll do. All right, let's go set this in the sun, and hopefully nobody tries to run off with it. This is the final result. Nice fine coarseness to it. Probably would have got a better result, a flatter result if I had kind of stretched it and pinned out some of the edges. Should still work. And uh, let's test it out. Get a nice polish. This is definitely gonna be a finer grit. Probably pretty much a final sand. So we have this section we previously sanded with the sandstone. Got a pretty good job. Let's see if we can finish it up. So supposedly it is burred in a certain direction. So I'll probably get the best results one way, not the other. Well, it's definitely gonna smell like fish. It's definitely really smooth. Very good for finishing, I think. 
unfortunately I'm not quite there. So let's try a few other ones. But first a quick thank you to today's sponsor. Today's video is all about putting that fine final polish on your wood and metalworking projects. Today's sponsor Harry offers the same excellent finish for your face with their exclusive razors. Manufactured in Germany, they provide a close and smooth shave, as smooth as a shark skin polish. The kit includes five blade razor, weighted handle, a blade cover, and the foaming gel. The razors offer a fair price with no unnecessary cost, just high quality blades at an affordable price. The razors have deeper handle grooves for improved grip and 50% of the plastic in the handle is recycled, complete with a precision trimmer and flex hinge. Enjoy the convenience of razor refills delivered directly to your door. It also includes a foaming shave gel for sensitive skin with aloe and hydroaluric acid. Redeem your start kit for just $3 when you go to harrys.com slash HTME. So another form of a natural abrasive is the horsetail plant, also known as the scouring rush. And this kind of grows almost anywhere. It's known for kind of collecting the silica from the natural soil and using it as a tough, rigid exterior to it. Which gives it kind of a, a very coarse and sandpaper-like outside. So it works pretty good as a material for scouring, scrubbing, polishing. So you have a few different ways to prepare it. Some say you need to boil it, some say you should cut it in half, and uh, most of them just say you let it dry out, and then you basically just rub it against it and polish it up. So let's give it a shot and try it out. So I think we want to go kind of a sideways motion because kind of the ribs are what's going to do the sanding, so we'll give that a shot. Nails on the board. I'm going to put headphones on. All right, so after doing a few little tests, I think this kind of comes out as a little bit coarser than the shark skin. It's like it's a good intermediate. I think it's still a little too fine for what I really need right now. Yeah, definitely not the most aggressive sandpaper, but does a nice polish to it. That is a pretty smooth finish. We got another section of rusty steel. Let's see how well the horsetail can scour it. All right, it's definitely working. I think it's taking off a little bit slower than the sandstone did. Additional tool I'm gonna to make now is called a strickle. Used specifically for sharpening scythe. So for something to sharpen, let's forge a scythe. Strickle is basically a wood knife shaped item that holds some fat or wax mixed with sand, making it an easy way to quickly sharpen your scythe in the field. So I've seen these come in a variety of different shapes, but oftentimes they're kind of like a paddle or roughly dagger shape. So I made this kind of rough dagger out of wood. So how you use this is pretty simple. You get some fat, scrape it onto there as kind of a binding agent. And you get some sand, get that in there too. So you get your pig fat, and you got your sand, and you get basically sandpaper. Let's try it all on a sickle. So judging just by the noise and kind of scratching noise, it's very similar to like a whetstone. So I, I, I have to say this is probably working. Um, there's probably better techniques. I. I basically, you use a whetstone, but let's try it out. See well cuts. Now that we have some straw, let's use that to make our next tool. Another option for a fine polish is called a polisser. Here we got the polisseur, 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 something like that. We got it dried and hardened up, trimmed to a nice smooth edge, and now we use this to polish. It basically just uses the edge of all the straw 
to do a final polish on things. So let's test it out. Let's see how it compares. We have a few different ways of doing a fine polish now. Let's see what's actually the finest polish. Probably the least, uh, least impressive so far. Okay, that's definitely working. Just gotta find the right point to use it. Here I could see it kind of lifted up all the little edges and kind of slowly sanded it down. So, definitely works if you know when to use it. Let's see, that's the best result I think compared to the other ones. A little bit of an edge here. Let's see if that smooths it out at all. A little bit smoother, but I don't know. All right, so I've tried out a, a few different ones now and I have to say uh, the, the poli policy air or poli polisher this polisher is not, not the most impressive. The sandstone was uh, pretty pretty effective. A bit more effective than I actually expected. And the pumice stone was surprisingly scratchy. Mm -hmm. Kind of made things worse. Yeah, so compared to the other ones, I have to say this, this polisher, is, uh, it does something, but it's uh, not, not the most impressive. So this has been an interesting exploration of a few different tools and techniques used for doing that final polish on your wood and metal projects. Actual sandpaper wasn't invented until sometime around the 11th century in China. For a while, sandpaper was made by crushing glass and gluing it to sheets of paper. I feel like that's gonna be a whole challenge to itself. This has been really fascinating and a fun way to explore this little thing that I think most people actually think about about pretty close to being fully moved into the new studio space. Really excited to get up and running and kind of back to normal. So just uh, moving in the last little things and we should be up and running and uh, start cranking out some of our normal content. You can buy a piece of our new workshop uh, brick. It'll have your name on it. You get those all engraved pretty soon here and uh, start putting names on the wall. So if you want to own a little bit of piece of the history, get your name permanently on there. Check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Without you, this won't be possible. Thanks. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.